So let's get to it. Hello and welcome to MFCP Woodworking. My name is John and before we get started on this, this is a video with a giveaway. So you'll want to go all the way to the end of the video to get all the rules. Um, and we'll get started with this. What we're making today is going to be letter openers out of six. Um, as you can see, I've got five different ones here. Uh, these are made out of alder sticks, all of these. I do make them out of other things. Um, as you can see, one of them has been stained already. They have not had a polyurethane finish on them. I recommend a finish on it, but uh, I'll get to that as I go here. What I need to do is I need to carve one. So what you start out with is a stick. This is an alder stick. It's fairly straight because uh, I wanted to make one that was fairly straight. Uh, you can't make a straight item out of a crooked stick. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, I normally do this with, um, with a utility knife or a uh, box cutter. But, much to my surprise, I had ordered a set of uh, carving knives from, um, from Amazon. And they have arrived early. I wasn't expecting them until next week. So we're going to get started. I've got a couple of knives here. There is a spoon carving knife in there. I'm not very adept with it yet, and I don't have the right materials for it anyway. So I'm going to start with this knife here. I keep my plastic knife protector and blade protector. And we're going to get started. First thing I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to remove uh, where the knots are. So we're going to cut that off quick. And we're going to remove the bark once I'm that far along. I just want to make this a little smoother. Um, one thing I noted very quickly, I've only had these this set for a day. I've noticed over the utility knife, I have a great deal more control with these knives than I have with the box cutter. Box cutter doesn't afford you a great deal of control. I appreciate it. So I'm going to strip the bark off. As you can see, I'm carving green. This wood is green. It's uh, a lot easier than working with dry wood. They will need to dry uh, before I put a finish on them. So usually they bounce around for maybe a week or at least a couple of days before I attempt to put any kind of a finish on them. But they, uh, this goes fairly quickly. And I'm going to try to keep this simple for the sake of the video because uh, I don't want to have too much for uh, my partner in crime here, Wesley, the uh, owner of Amy2 channel. You can take a look at that. He does me a great deal of work. He's doing the camera work right now. He also does a lot of my editing, which I really appreciate it because it's a, it's a lot of work. And since I work full time, I don't have as much time to pay attention to it as I otherwise would like to. So I take all the bark off it and get the basic shape. Now I'm going to want this one to be straight with a little handle. A lot of mine are stylized after a knife. If you if you can understand that. These are not weapons, they're just for opening letters. They are not very sharp. In fact, if you make them too sharp, they don't last as long because the edge gets messed up on them. Okay, so I've got the bark off of that. And I'm looking to make, uh, I'm gonna make a conical end here on it. And so I'm just gonna take this down to a point. This stick, incidentally, is about between 10 and 12 inches long. Take this down to a conical point. This is what's going to be the end of my handle. It's not difficult to do. It takes a little bit of trimming. A bit like sharpening a marshmallow stick, only I'm going a little more blunt. And that's my pointed end here. I make stop cuts where I want to make the have the uh, handle begin and end. So I'm going to cut into it there. Cut back. I just want to define the location. Now, sometimes I'm just doing this roughly and quickly. Sometimes you're going to want to draw out what you do on the wood, especially if you're wanting accuracy. I'm not too worried about accuracy here. I'm just worried about getting this done quickly, so I'm keeping it kind of simple. This is called a stop cut. I, uh, I don't actually know the names of a lot of the cuts. I just do them. It's a whittling cut, and I'm bringing this down just defining the end of the handle here. We'll do something more with it when we're done. 
I'm not perfectly straight here, so I do. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is hand carved. Sometimes you kind of like it to be a little off. I'm going to try to find a plane to work in here because I don't want uh, my my blade to be too wobbly or just veer off to one way or the other. Um, I don't mind if it goes along its length a little bit like that, but I I don't want it to be a the issue. Let me shave off the some of the irregularities here. It is to make a long, thin blade that can be inserted into the envelope crease and used to split the envelope crease upwards and out, like the way most letter openers work. This, incidentally, was all inspired by one I made for myself before. It's a, there's a video, and there will be a link to it at the end of the video. Um, Basically, I just wanted to make one for my own usage, and it, I made the video. It's, it's not a video showing how to make one. It's just a, hey, look at I did kind of video, if you know what I mean. I'm check it now and then to see how straight I am, which it doesn't have to be all that straight. And incidentally, these this is going to be one of the ones that you could win if you want. If you're one of the ones chosen to win, you will have a choice of the ones that I have available. And I already have made seven of them. Yeah, I've already made seven uh, of these that are available. The original one which I made is not available. It's got Katakana on it, which is actually spells out my first name, my real first name. The one that I don't tell anybody about. I'm going to start bringing this down to a blade. Close to the handle is probably the most difficult part of the blade to make. The blade you can make either one-sided or double-sided. Depends on what you're trying to achieve style-wise. On the right side, alder is quite easy to work. It's very straight-grained. I mean, it's not completely regular, but it's got a fairly straight grain. And this is a little longer than I like anyway, so I'm likely to trim this a little bit short here. This is probably the hardest part here. My carving kit did come with a pair of gloves, which helps protect me. Uh, one thing to remember when you're working, carving a knife, any kind, even a box cutter, a sharp. I've slashed a pair of pants open once. Felt very bad about it. It's a good pair of jeans that weren't so good afterwards. My wife was not real happy with me, and I was not real happy with myself because I don't really have money to throw away at for clothes. But it could have been worse. That uh, could have been me instead of the cloth. Um, you catch yourself across the leg like that by accident, you can take yourself for a number of stitches and you can bleed a lot too, make a mess. <clears throat> Not my idea of a good time. Slowly trim this down. This wood is quite flexible and it's surprisingly strong. It's considered junky wood by a lot of people, but I have found that there's a lot that I can do with it. I can turn it, I can carve it. Continue to take this down a little bit. And be careful because I don't want to cut my handle off. I've done it before where I've damaged the handle by cutting too far. This is just a stopped cut. I'm not putting a great deal of pressure on it. Oh, that's coming along nicely now. So we're doing a two-sided blade. So we're gonna, it's gonna end up curving upward a little bit. And I'm gonna take it off about because I do have bonus material here, if you know what I mean. This material that I don't really need. You can see the basic form is coming along here. Basically, from here, we're just refining it. We're making it uh, better. We're cleaning it up. Um, I usually offset my uh, blade a little bit off the center. And one of the reasons I do that is because a lot of woods have what's called a pith pith often there's it can crack from the pith um, some piths for example uh, a wood that I use I'm the only person who uses it that I know of it's called red Aussie or dogwood you'll see it in a future vi video I'm sure it has a very thick styrofoamy pith and you don't want to have that where you need strength in the blade um, I have to go offset on those ones or I, I I don't end up with a viable blade on my wood. This on the other hand I do. 
Just going to angle this a little bit. This is fairly clean the way it is. If it comes too much of a point, like the one I made previously, the one that uh, you see in the other video, it comes to too much of a point here and the actual tip broke off in use. It's still usable. In fact, I do I have it up here? No, I don't. I didn't bring it up here. But it stays my by, by my desk and it serves me by opening letters. I open my bills with it. Uh, kind of please, it's, it's a useful item to have around. Now this is pretty close to the final shape. I'm just going to continue refining it. Now, I refine it with a knife, pretty rough. From there, I will usually go to uh, a file. I bought these at the dollar store. These are cheap. This is just to take some of the uh, roughness off of it and place some of the irregularities that aren't coming out with a knife. Because sometimes your knife strokes are a lot more obvious than I like. And these last a lot longer than sandpaper. When I'm done with with these, I will go to the sandpaper and I will finish it up that way. When I'm done, I can stain it. For example, what I did with this one, I did two different stains on this one, the redwood and the uh, and the walnut. Once it's all uh, cleaned up, I'll put a coat of polyurethane on it. That'll make the blade a little bit stronger, a little bit tougher, the edge a little tougher, because uh, you can see this, it's got a lot of flex to it. That will decrease as the wood dries. End up being a good thing. And that's how you make one of these. I mean, sanding and filing work. It's just refining it, making it smoother. Now, you can win one of these. And the rules are quite simple. First, you need to be a subscriber to my channel. If you're a subscriber to this channel, you also need to comment. If you've seen the one that you want, i like you to tell me which one you want or what style you want. I have the special hand one with this spiral, spiral handle carved into it. I've got something similar without a spiral handle. It's just a plain handle. It has a plain blade. I also had one that I made out of a curved stick. This stick had, two, had a switchback curve. It was kind of S-shaped. This one has a single cutting side on it and the blade is styled into it. I'm, I'm really pleased with how this turned out because I've, the uh, the stick was almost ready to go into the fireplace because I wasn't sure I could get anything decent out of it. Uh, but my skills improving and I, I, I actually really like this one. So I need a comment from you telling me that you want to win one of these I will give you the option. It, once you're a winner, you will have a choice. The first, the winners will all be drawn. I will draw the first winner when we have 50 uh, subscribers on the uh, channel. We have 17 to go, because right now I have 33. I have 17 to go. The second draw will occur at 100 subscribers. After that, because I want this to be a long-term thing, I, these are easy to make, and I, look, and I actually enjoy making. I'll probably make dozens of them before we complete the whole thing. After that, every 200 new subscribers will do a new draw. I'm sending them out at my expense. It's coming out of my pocket, and I can and will send them anywhere in the world. My first draw, it went to St. Petersburg, Russia. I'm in Canada. Literally, I am willing to send them anywhere in the world. So wherever you are, your subscription to my channel is appreciated. Your comment will be needed because I can't draw you out if I don't know you want to be in it. How you enter is to make a comment on this video or one of the other videos that's going to be in this series because I'm going to make other ones in the future. So uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, have fun carving if you want to make these yourself. They're really not that difficult to make. So have a good day.